this week on the Startup Life. And you got to learn how to talk, man. Absolutely. You got you got to you got to be open. You have to you know raise your voice, lift it so they can understand you, and then let them know. Because if you're coming up, uh, yeah, yeah <laughs> they're not going to take you serious. Right. Absolutely. You're you absolutely know, right. Though when you're I right. speak, you're going to know I'm speaking, and you're going to know I mean business. So, Startup Nation, let's take flight with Michael Franks, founder and CEO of We Deliver. The startup life begins now. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. You'll never have the sacred stone. <laughs> oh, this you crazy mother. The Startup Life is brought to you by OWLS. If you are a high-impact organization, school, small business, or nonprofit, and you are in need of professional development or strategy in your organization, you can reach OWLS at 901-857-4818 or visit our website at www.askowlsllc.com. OWLS will also be the home to our new online school, the OWL Academy, coming soon. All right, Startup Nation, so I hope you're ready to get some value today. We are right here with my man, CEO of We Deliver, Michael Franks. How you doing today, man? I'm doing great, man. All right, Blessed, so. man. Cool, cool. You ready to take flight with us today and pour some knowledge into our listeners? I am. Let's go. Cool. Absolutely. All right, so the first question is, man, I just want to know, what's your story? We always hear about these great stories of how entrepreneurs start their journey, but what's your story? I think... Um Everybody's always, you know, had a dream of owning their own business, right? Uh, right. But they, they, they never, you know, act on it. Absolutely. And I think what really made me act on it was in early 2014. It was spring break. We got one week of vacation a year, so I took my vacation. I went to Texas, mm-hmm. and you know, I was having breakfast with my best friend mm-hmm. since we, you know, best friend since we was four years old. Gotcha. We left, and then you no, know, I got a text a little while later. He was dead. That's crazy. It was, I, I came back home. Right. Because the funeral wasn't until next Saturday. Mm-hmm. And then I told my boss, you know, I said, you know, that's, that's like my brother, man. He's like, we ain't got no more vacation days. Mm-hmm. I'm like. That's crazy. Uh, it's like, so now I got to rearrange my whole schedule. So I drove all the, I drove six hours back down to Texas and then turned around and drove six hours back. And I think that is what pushed me. Like, I don't want to do this no more. That's interesting. That's and, very interesting. You know, because I'd always had ideas. Me and my, my best friend, you know, he's always owned his businesses. Well, my best friend here and the best friend out of Texas is, is uh, Jamal's dad uh, owns his own trucking business. So, I mean, everybody around me has their own businesses. Mm-hmm. And then here I am, you know, one week of vacation a year, and I just used it. And now I can't go to someone who I love more than my real family. So gotcha. I think that, that that's that's what finally pushed me and made me want to, you know, do this. That's crazy, man. He, so he, he just couldn't bring the human side of him out to just mm-hmm. be like, just go ahead and, and yeah, you know. You, know you, were, you, you bit the big corporation, man. They don't care about that. That's true. That's true. That's they, true. Um, you know, it's, it's like, like you said, you know, you have a million dollar store you got to run. Fair enough. You right. know, and I mean, I understand business is business. But at the same time, you know, that's that's my brother. Absolutely. We was born seven days apart. You know, we was just attached at the hip since I first met him, four that. years old. So Wow. You never know how you become, you know, into this life. You yeah. Just, that's crazy. That's crazy. But um, what was your first business idea or what did you, and what did you do with it? My first business idea was uh, called Priority Mobile. Okay. And I actually, I did launch it and it did very well for a while. Okay. Uh, because... I've been in cell phones for the last five or six years. When I left the music business, um, my best friend, he got me a job at Target Mobile. And then I kind of moved my way up from there. Mm-hmm. And then uh, T-Mobile came around with this thing where they're financing phones. Mm-hmm. And then okay. we, we didn't sell T-Mobile phones. We sold AT&T, Sprint, and Verizon. And then AT&T brought it along. And I was like, well, what's stopping somebody from coming here, you know, paying the $20 down payment? taking this phone, never paying for it, and then going directly over to Straight Talk. Mm. And they was like, man, that's a good question. We never think about that. I was like, well, Straight Talk uses y'all's network. Y'all know you think y'all need to, you need to think about this. Right. So I was like, well, what if I started something where I can finance Straight Talk phones? Okay. And then I was like, you know, so I, t- I called Kenzie, my best friend here, who uh, was in the cell phone business. He's been with him about 15 years. Gotcha. And I was like, well, why don't we finance Boost Mobile phones? Why don't we finance all these prepaid phones where people with bad credit who can't come to AT&T and Verizon and Sprint 
uh, get denied because I mean everybody wants a new iPhone. I think the iPhone 4s or 5 was out back then. Right, right. When I came up with this idea, so I Googled. They uh, it was called it's a company called SmartPay. Okay. And then I mean they approved me that day. So shoot, I built the website. I started selling phones on eBay. I put started putting them on Craigslist, and then I started selling phones. Nice. So, nice. but okay. yeah, when they um that, that that lasted for probably about a year, mm-hmm. and then AT and T and Verizon was like, "Yo, they they're still in our phones." And then that's when <laughs> gotcha. I guess they 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 kind of put some money in, you know, took it, took it to DC, and they all came together and said, "Hey, we need this law pushed." And you start bricking phones. So now, because I I I hate to say it, but just I think every phone that you bought on Craigslist was probably stolen anyway. Wow. And they come to find out, I mean, I didn't know that personally. You think you're buying phones from somebody, or you buy them on eBay for 200 bucks, Right. And then you finance it for $250. Mm-hmm. You're still making 50 bucks, Right. But come to find out, you can't do that no more. Because if you don't pay your finance bill with Verizon or AT&T, they, they brick the phone. Gotcha. So, I mean, you have a $600 paperweight. Wow, that's so crazy. That business didn't last very long. I mean, it was very, I mean, it's profitable while it lasted, but. Oh, no, that's cool. So you basically, you know, you saw that there was an underserved market and you, mm-hmm. you, know, you went for it. Yeah, hey, took no advantage wrong with that, of it. Man. No wrong with that at all. Who inspires you as an entrepreneur and why? Uh, I would have to say, I don't I don't have like, I mean, I have books and things. Uh, people always say Bill Gates or. Fair enough. You know, Cliche answers, yeah, right? Yeah, <laughs> things like that. I think I think you is one because, you know, I follow your posts every day. Oh, I read thanks, them and man. things like that. I appreciate that, man. And then another guy, Jason <laughs> Daniels. up to the host. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Go ahead, and then man, uh, Jason Daniels. Okay, uh, he's the yeah. owner of Titans Electric. Yeah, I just started following him. That that dude, he puts on, he's doing some dope stuff up there in Nashville. Mm-hmm. He just moved up there, right? Well, he he, he went last week to okay. us to look for a, a new house. Gotcha. Um, so I think because I mean, since I I can I can ask you guys questions, right? If I if I ever need anything, absolutely, absolutely. And um, if there's ever a post, you know, you post on mine, I post on yours. Mm-hmm. We get to talk to each other. I can't talk to Gary V. Gotcha. You know, I, I can't hit, I can't call Mark Zuckerberg and say, hey, I got a question. You know, how can I do this? I mean, it's cool to look up to them. It's cool to, you know, follow their business models or whatever. Absolutely. But I think Absolutely. a mentor is somebody that you need to really speak with. Absolutely. It, it, it's crazy you say that because the thing is we, we live in an era where uh, a lot of people are always trying to, like, you know, push other people down, not trying to help each other. But I think uh, when you have entrepreneurs and they get around each other, they they genuinely, genuinely want to help each other. They really do. Right. And so mm-hmm. and we look out for each other like, man, you know, ever thought about doing this in your business or whatever the case may be. But, you know, I really think we are really a, a community, mm-hmm. you know, that's um, that looks out for each other. So I'm glad you pointed that out. Um, what did you learn from your from the worst boss you ever had? Man, that would be my my last boss at Verizon. Man, she just wasn't. <laughs> gotcha, dude. I mean, I I I I, I mean, I, it's just she was so nice. She could crunch numbers, right? And she could manipulate numbers like I'd never seen before. Mm, but when okay. she came down the pipeline and said, you know, you need to do this, you need to do that, she'd always laugh at the end of mm. her instruction That's or she would always you know like try to make it lighthearted. she was never saying you know you need to do this you need to do it now or there's going to be repercussions at the end of the day it was never like that with her gotcha. and to me she was like soft now i respected her so i never ran over her gotcha but there was other account managers who was like man f her you know <laughs> gotcha. and then they would stay at home all day long mm-hmm. and then you know here i am driving to my store in one of the malls or going to one of the targets, you know, because the stores was in there also, they would be at home. You drive out of the house and right. they're, they're, it's like, and then when you went to tell her, mm-hmm. she's like, oh, well, they've been here for 20 years. Ain't nothing we can do. It's like, what's that sad. all about? <laughs> so here we are. We the new employees. We've been there for a year. Right. And, you know, we busting our ass and then this person is laying on our ass. So what What? What are we, you know, right. I, I, I didn't like that. She just didn't have that. She didn't have a backbone. So I think that's what I learned. You got you have to have a backbone. I mean, people, people, they can respect, but they they got to have some type of fear. Right, being a boss, man, they got to fear you a little bit. At the same Absolutely. time, respect you, especially as an entrepreneur, because like this is your baby or your mm-hmm. dream, right? So it's like you don't have that backbone, man. They can re- easily not just run over you and your business, but they're they're literally running over your dream, man. Yeah. And that can suck. It really can. Yeah, you know, you don't want up. nobody to mess up what you've worked for because they didn't work for it. You Absolutely. worked for it. Absolutely. And they're not nearly as invested as you are, right? Mm-hmm, exactly. Absolutely. Let me ask you this. How do you market or advertise? Do you use social media for marketing and advertising? Well, or? for we deliver, you know, social okay. media, yeah. Okay. Um, now, I did sell We Deliver in Memphis. It's done. And so but I gotcha. sold it. Okay. Um, but I still have We Deliver in four other cities. Gotcha. Now, um, I am 
at the beginning of the year, mm-hmm. passing it off to them. Okay. To the people who run it. Because gotcha. what I do is I when I hire somebody, I give them 50% of the business. Got gotcha. you. So okay. I don't hire them and put them on no type of payroll or whatever. What you work for is what you get. Okay. So it's kind of like Uber. Yeah, you know, I, yeah, it and, is. And that's basically what I made We Deliver after was Uber. That same business but it, model. To yeah. be honest with you, man, it's 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 nickel and diamond me to death. Mm. You know, I can make $50 today. I can make $500 tomorrow. And then I can make no money on Monday. Gotcha. So it was just to the point where hiring employees every week, you know, mm. depending on them to be there. And then since I'm not in, you know, the Tri-Cities over in East Tennessee, mm, it, it's gotcha. kind of hard to... To run that. And then when you have people who call you every day to want to make an order for delivery, you don't have an employee. Gotcha. So it got, it, it got, it's fun. It mm-hmm. keeps you busy. Right. But it was just the, the amount of work that goes until we deliver, it's, it's nickel and diamond. Gotcha. Fair so. enough. When you say Tri Cities, is that the Bristol Kingsport? Yeah. That was, okay. Because yeah. I, I actually used to, uh, my first year in college was in East Tennessee. I went to Maryville. Mm-hmm. And so I was, uh, went to Maryville. And actually, I uh, used to work part time at uh, Foot Locker over in Morristown, okay, over in, in Knoxville as well. So I'm somewhat familiar uh, with the area. Mike, entrepreneurs consider themselves as lifelong learners, right? Mm-hmm. They engage in constant professional development. What does that mean to you? And what are some of the things that you think you're learning now? The number one lesson I'm learning now is uh, to control my emotions. Mm, okay, I am a very emotional person. <laughs> gotcha. I am. Um, I can, you know, be so nice. One second, and then I'm just totally this evil asshole two seconds later. Uh, even, you know, at Verizon or when I was at Costco, you know, I mean, I, 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 cussed, a, I cussed a customer out. Oh, no. <laughs> because, I mean, I just, I'm, I'm one of those where, you know, I, I respect you as long as I can. Mm. But now that I own my business, I, I can't be doing it. I can't go on social media, have these emotional rants anymore. Gotcha. Because you go to Gary V's page, I mean, he may have an emotional rant about a business, right. but his personal life or going off on somebody, gotcha. you know, you can't do that. Trying to find um, that balance. Yeah. Right. You I know, got you. And just, you know, somebody wrote something on my cousin's page. He's passed away. And then I went off on that. So, I mean, I just, mm. I need to con- uh, control my emotions gotcha. on social media. That's, that's the biggest lesson I'm learning right now. Gotcha. Fair enough. I, I, I think to a certain extent, we're all trying to learn that lesson. Yeah. Because in this day and age, there's so many things that can just kind of tick us off, right? Mm-hmm. So, you know, uh, but no, I totally understand that. Uh, what did you learn from your biggest failure? I've, I've not had the biggest failure not yet. Not the biggest failure? Okay. No, because, okay. I mean, I've been doing this for two years. Okay. Uh, I mean, even though the business, um, we closed them, mm-hmm. I wouldn't consider it a failure. Fair enough. Because Fair enough. I, I, I've, it's not put me in no type of shock where I have to say, oh, you know, I just lost $10,000. Because I've, I've never lost that much amount of money yet. Now, gotcha. my next business venture that, you know, I'm opening spring break next Absolutely. year. And we're going to talk that, about that a little bit later, right? Yeah. Okay, cool, cool. That, uh, you know, this, this, this is the big one. Gotcha. This, this is the one where I've spent $20,000. I have other people saying, hey, you know, I'm going to give you $20,000. So now... I've, I've actually, because we deliver everything else, I've never had an investor. Okay. I have investors now. Nice. So it has to work because if I don't get these people their money back. Fair enough, yeah. You know, <laughs> they'll it, come it, knocking this on the door. What, what I'm, 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 taking, I'm taking a leap of faith right now, man. Absolutely. Um, and that's the life, right? Yeah. <laughs> that's the life. So uh, if we ever do another interview, I hope we're not oh, talking no. about the biggest failure, <laughs> but I, I hope I can answer the question just like I did just now too. No, man, I I, I think uh, I think you know what you're trying to uh, hop into, and we've talked about a little bit off air about mm-hmm. you know what you're about to do. I, I think it's awesome. I mm-hmm. think it's awesome, and you know, and you know, risky, but you know, that's the life, right? So yeah. I look forward to you know. I don't want it to be your biggest failure, man. I don't want it to be. Yeah, I don't want so, you to have any failures, mm-hmm. but you know, and they, I got I don't know how it react. <laughs> right. If, if I lost twenty thousand dollars of my money. And then twenty thousand dollars, somebody else's yeah. money is like, you know, I'd probably feel more, you know, worse for them. And got you. Me having a son, so man, you gotta. No, fair enough. No, gotta, but you're super smart, man. You'll figure yeah. it out. Oh yeah, you know, you'll figure it out. Let's go right to the next question. Some say entrepreneurs need some type of formal education, or some say you need, you know, just an idea and work ethic. Where do you uh, stand on that spectrum? Like, do you, do you have to go get a four-year degree to be an entrepreneur? You think that 
you know, put you like above and beyond like people who don't go to college or mm-hmm. what do you, where do you stand on that? Well, I think a four year degree is dumb as hell. <laughs> Fair I'm enough. Just, okay. I'm just going to be honest with you. just going to put it out there. I'm right. going to be honest with All you. Right. I think if you want to, if you want to own a business, you do, you do need education. Absolutely. Don't get me wrong. Mm-hmm. But if, if I'm going to open my business, why do I need to take U.S. history? Why, why do I need to take biology? Okay. You know, why do I need to cover a pig in college to, to, to run a business. Right. You know, if I would have known now what I knew, then I would have taken just certain classes. Gotcha. I think the first class you need to take is speech class. Okay. Before you take any business class. Fair enough. Because if you can't talk to nobody, you can't run a business. That's a good point. Good point. Absolutely. So, and then you take your business classes, you take business courses. Mm-hmm. And even the business courses that I took, you know, I have a, a associates in business. I mean, they, they didn't teach me. When, when, I, when I got my first manager's job at 21, dude, that... Right. So they do not teach you how to talk to customers, to handle complaints. They don't. <laughs> they don't. They don't teach you none of that, man. That's that's all personal experience. But yeah, I, w- I would say not not a not necessarily a four year college where you're coming out fifty thousand dollars in debt, but just t- just take what you need. I mean, you can go to University of Memphis and mm-hmm. shell out five thousand dollars of your own money, take five or six classes, and then go off and do what you need to do. Absolutely. Last question before we go to break. What does your average day look like? And try to be as specific as possible. My average day, mm-hmm. all right, well, I sleep about three hours a day. Fair enough. Um, <laughs> Sounds familiar. <laughs> I, I go to bed probably about 10 or 11 every morning. I'm, I'm back up at 2.30 uh, in the afternoon because my son gets out of school. Right. Um, so I like sleeping during the daytime because everybody's at work. Nobody's mm-hmm. calling me. Nobody's messing with me. <laughs> gotcha. And then I get up. Me, I, he meets me on the truck most of the time. Right. I go to the post office. I give him a $5 box from KFC. I come back. <laughs> Five dollar boxes, man. Those are amazing for kids. Gotcha. Man, you in a hurry, and it's and it's right there next to the post office. Gotcha. So, Fair enough. So, um, uh, I'm at the post office every day. Uh, I come back to the house. Uh, I get ready to, because um, you know I do eBay also. That's, gotcha. that's my number right. one thing right now. Okay. Uh, like a I've drop, develop- drop ship model, drop mm. ship model, or mm, I don't do no job. I, okay. I, I develop. I, I make uh, custom sports cards, believe it or oh, not. Oh, sweet. Okay. So uh, that, that's my number one thing right now. I, di- I didn't know. I mean, I just, I, that was just something I just kind of ha- hopped onto. Mm. And I did it as a ho- – I'm a huge sports card collector. Gotcha. I, I made some custom Steve McNair cards one day, and then I put them on this little web Facebook page mm-hmm. where our collectors are, well, can you make this? Can you make that? I'm like, yeah. All right. And then I like, we pay you, and then, you know – I was like, okay, well, my all-time favorite set is 89 Upper Deck. So I took like 200 of the greatest sports athletes of all time, mm. and I put it in the 89 Upper Deck. I put it on eBay, and I made $2,000 in one day. Got you. And I was like, man, really? <laughs> so, yeah, that, that was, it was it kind of happened upon that. But then, you know, so to continue on with my day, Got you. I come home, I cut the cards up that I printed the night before. Mm-hmm. Uh, I put them on eBay. Uh, start at six thirty every night. Put all the East Coast teams on at six thirty, and by the time seven thirty come around, I put all Central teams on there. By the time eight thirty comes around, six thirty in California, they're off work. They're at the house. I put all the California teams on there. Gotcha. Okay. So I break it down, and then as soon as I do that, I go back to designing the next day's cards. I print them, and then I get my son up. About six thirty for school. That's it. That's it. You every get, day, man. get up and do it all over again. All right? over again. That's what right. I do every day. Well, you actually just sparked a follow up question, if I may. Do you find yourself as an entrepreneur because it's like when you when you delve into this life, right? Mm-hmm. You you have all these ideas and your creativity just kind of comes out, right? Mm-hmm. Do you find yourself like you know? Ah, that sounds like a good idea, but I got to hold off on it for right mm-hmm. now because I'm trying to make sure this works right. Do you do you find yourself kind of with that that struggle? That all the time. T- okay, all the time. But now <laughs> now I've come to stop myself. Like no, okay, what we're going to do this is generating you no know, great money. It's just don't, just don't even worry about that right now. Got you because okay. you know you everybody like you have this app idea. Like right. I had an app idea. It was like because I go into Target, I'm like, where the hell is the laundry detergent at? <laughs> You know, but gotcha. what if there was an app where you could go in there ah. and then it's like, OK, you know, where the stores would be able to update where they move stuff. You could go straight to it. But then I was like, I, I, you know, because I worked at Costco for two years. Gotcha. OK. The business model was to move stuff around every day mm. to keep you moving in the store looking for stuff. Ah. So I was like, the app would never work because Target, they changed the front end caps. They change stuff every day to keep you moving 
to find other stuff. Did and then I they know put, that? Yeah. Okay. So that's why you have little clearance sections on almost every aisle that you have uh, different end caps when you go into the store almost every day. Wow. And the reason why they do that is to keep you moving. Wow. So my app, even though I most men would love that, right, <laughs> to be able to look on an app and say, "Hey, it's on aisle seven. right? That 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 wouldn't work. So I kind of let that one go. Gotcha. It's funny you mention that because I actually I, I, they do that uh, the Home Depot app where mm-hmm. like you can just kind of type it in like it's on aisle seven, bay, whatever. So mm-hmm. now I'm actually familiar with what you're talking about. So how you like it being on the startup life? I like it, man. This is cool. I is like it, it, man. All this right, cool. cool man. So we're going to go ahead and take a quick break, and you're listening to The Startup Life. If you are a teacher looking for great resources, look no further than Owls e-commerce store on Teachers Pay Teachers. Store name, Teaching with Owls. Enjoy great lessons based on stories from great authors such as Kate Chopin's Story of an Hour and Edgar Allan Poe's The Master of the Red Death. And don't worry, teachers, all lessons are Common Core aligned. All right, Startup Nation, so let's continue. So, Mike, what was the best piece of advice you've ever gotten and what's the worst? Uh, the best piece of advice I ever gotten was, uh, I think, at Verizon. Okay. It's from the same lady who okay. I said. Same lady? Yeah, yeah, the same exact lady. I, w- <laughs> I was sitting down for an interview for a promotion. Mm-hmm. She she said, you know, what do you think your three weaknesses and your three strengths are? So I told her. And she said, well, I'm going to tell you what I think they are. Mm. And then she she gave me the, the three strengths. Number one was honesty. Gotcha. And she said, I could only find one weakness about you, and it's honesty. Wow. So I, I was okay. sitting there like, so my number one strength is honesty, and my number one strength uh, weakness is honesty? I, I didn't understand it. She broke right. it down. She was like, you know, I've went into stores and the managers have come to tell me that, you know, you're going off on their employees. Mm-hmm. You know, because even though I worked for Verizon, I trained Best Buy employees. Gotcha. To, to okay. sell yeah, Verizon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, that makes I sense. Went, that makes I went sense. to Target to, to train them. And, you know, if I go into Best Buy and then I see the manager Snapchatting with employees while I have a customer over here wanting to buy a Verizon phone, I'm going to go off on you. Right. I, don't, I don't give a damn you're my employee or not. That's my bonus. That's <laughs> right. my commission. Absolutely. You know, my, my boss wants her bonus and commission. So, I mean, that came back to her. Mm-hmm. You know, but I mean, that's just that's just the way that I am. She said, you know, your honesty is great, <laughs> but at the same time, it's not great. That's your gotcha. biggest weakness. You need to know if, if you have a problem with a manager, then you, you need to pull them to the side and say this or you need to come to me that way I can go to their district manager and gotcha. let it let it go downhill. So I think that's probably the best advice. Okay, cool. What about the worst? Oh, or is, that, is that one in the same? Best that, I, I would have to say that's probably one in the same okay, right, right there. Fair enough. All right, cool, uh, cool. I just wanted to make sure. I just wanted uh, to make yeah. sure. All right, cool. So what do you think is a popular misconception about business or running a business? People think that they can just start one Ooh, today. Boy. Make money tomorrow. <laughs> They think they can call Shark Tank and get a hundred thousand dollars this Friday night at eight PM, and it's it's all gravy. Wow, no, absolutely! I've been very blessed and fortunate absolutely. to have great ideas uh, to make money. Mm-hmm. It hasn't made me rich, but you know I've been self employed for ten months. Mm-hmm. Um, my credit scores actually went up. Oh wow! So I'm, I'm okay. actually doing okay. Look at that. So uh, <laughs> I, I'm, you know, uh, it's a blessing. I'm not making as much as I was at Verizon. Gotcha. But at the same time, being here with my son every day, absolutely, um, it's well worth it, man. I'll, I'll take a twenty thousand dollar pay cut any year. Absolutely, to be, to be here with my son. So, it it no. allows you to give give you that work life balance yeah. that a lot of people crave mm-hmm. these days, mm-hmm. right? So no, absolutely, that's a good one. How did you come up with the idea or the concept for your uh, business? I uh, just got tired of eating pizza all the time. <laughs> <laughs> you know, sometimes you want something else. You gotcha. know, and then you always, you, you, you scroll through Facebook and like, man, I wish somebody would deliver me some wine. Mm. I wish somebody would, you know, like, hey, I wish Gus is delivered. You gotcha. know, it's like, hmm. Let me look into this. Gotcha. And in Tennessee, you can deliver liquor now. Oh. Now, even though I am shutting down the food part. Right. I am. I'm, I'm going to go full fledged liquor and only deliver after 5 p.m. starting next year. Gotcha. With uh, it's not going to be called We Deliver Memphis, of course, because I sold it. Gotcha. To right. Grubhub, mm-hmm. and they uh, take the name and everything. So, gotcha. 
we're going it's going to be something different and it's just going to be liquor because i mean i don't even need to own no liquor to deliver it i can just go up here to any of the liquor stores like i already have gotcha. and say hey i want to deliver your liquor it's free mm-hmm. you get more money i pay for all the licenses mm-hmm. and you don't do nothing Wow. Yeah, I don't see so, why they wouldn't take that. Oh, yeah, they love it. <laughs> right. I mean, they they absolutely love it, man, And because there's, nothing falls back on them. Okay. I mean, you're making more money doing nothing. Cool that. I'm starting to see that you have a real knack for understanding in a marketplace what's missing. Mm-hmm. Or, and you, know, and, you know, and you apply that to not just, you know, how you go about, you know, starting a business, but also how to service the customer. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think that's, you know. I have a question later on about your superpower, but it seems like you have that superpower as well. Mm-hmm. So that's kind of dope. When you, you know, I know you said earlier that, you know, when uh, and we deliver, you pretty much give them 50% of the business or uh, for that area, correct? Yeah, that like, area. For that area, yeah. right? For uh, whatever jobs they do. Yeah. So I guess based on that model, I know it's not the traditional employee uh, situation, mm-hmm. but what do you look for when you uh, when you have an employee like that or when you're looking for a partner in that area, if mm-hmm. you will? Well, I looked for, uh, first thing is, how do you talk to me? Mm, okay. Are you afraid to ask me a question? If you're afraid to ask me a question, you're going to be afraid to ask the customer a question. You can't work with me. Fair enough. Uh, just point blank, period. If you're shy, if you're afraid to talk to anybody, that's why I said the first thing you need to do when you go to college, take speech class. Mm, okay. You know, stand up in front of audience, talk to people, learn to talk to people, how to talk to people. I'm still learning how to talk to people, of course. Fair enough. Because of my attitude. Mm-hmm. But uh, other than that, I mean, you got to learn how to talk, man. Absolutely. You got you got to you got to be open. You have to you know raise your voice, lift it so they can understand you, and then let them know. Because if you're coming up, uh, yeah, yeah <laughs> they're not going to take you serious, right? Absolutely, you're you absolutely know, right. Though when you're I right. speak, you're going to know I'm speaking, and you're going to know I mean business. So, absolutely. Have you ever had to uh, turn down a client? Like maybe I don't know. You had a not a so great experience with a we deliver client, and you was like, we ain't deliver that person no more. Even though they no be, no not really no, okay not, not not when we deliver now my uncle down in Birmingham he owns a table tent and chair business okay um, I refused to help him on a job once oh that okay. was uh, I got laid off in '03 and uh, you know he did uh, like all the Alabama games and mm-hmm. so I became a huge Alabama fan ah oh, okay. those folks down there are nuts oh, man oh, I, oh they, I know they're, they're, they're crazy <laughs> right so we we went to uh, he did weddings and stuff like that too mm-hmm. so we went to a wedding site and then it was a white guy gotcha and. It was just me, my uncle was white, and everybody else on the crew was black. Mm-hmm. And the the uh, the owner of the house was like, no, they can't come in here. Oh, you wow. know, y'all can do it. And then I told my uncle, I said, I'm not going to help you. Fair you know? enough. So I think that's about the only time I ever turned down a client. Fair enough. Okay. And Absolutely. You know, you know there's right and wrong. I think uh, money's not everything. Absolutely. Uh, because I think if you, if you take that money, Mm-hmm. You know, bad things are going to happen to you later. Laws gotcha. of the universe, I truly believe in. Absolutely. And um, you, know, you got to do the right thing. Absolutely. Yeah, it, it, you know, it's one thing to make money, but it's also uh, another thing to make, you know, ethical money, if mm-hmm. you will, right? So, no, I totally... Uh, and I don't want clients to not come after me neither. That's why a mm, lot of times you don't point. see... Good point. ...we deliver on my, my, my social media anymore. Okay. Because during, during the elections... How how many friends did I lose? I lost thirty to forty friends during the mm, elections because I yeah. didn't agree with one of the candidates. Right now, what if I put that on my page? No, right. so it's not me turning down a client; it's clients turning down me also. Gotcha. So you have to look at that aspect also. Gotcha. Um, so that goes back to my emotional state Absolutely. on, um, <laughs> you know, social media. <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> Fair enough. If you had one piece of advice for someone starting out, what would it be? Like starting out their path to entrepreneur, what would it be? Make sure that it's something that you really, really want to do and you have a passion for it. Mm-hmm. And you you love doing it, not just because of the money. You know, if you see somebody owning a club, mm-hmm. and if you if you see Curtis Givens out here make you know driving a brand new Bentley, don't open a club because you see Curtis Givens driving a brand new Good Bentley. Good point. Good point. Don't uh if you see, you know, like when I was talking to uh, Mr. Daniels, you know, mm-hmm. he told me about this new contract that he had. I'm not gonna go open an electric business because this 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 contract that he got mm-hmm. or that he's expanding to Nashville. I need to do something that I have a passion for. Gotcha. Um, Absolutely. You know, I love sports cards. You know, I could do this f- for the rest of my life. Mm. You know, I love the beach, so I'm going to rent scooters on the beach. You know, so that, that'll put me in an area where I want to be. So do something 
that you have a passion for and don't do it just because somebody else is doing it because you see them with nice things. Gotcha. And for those of you who are not in the Memphis area, Curtis Gibbs is like a party promoter type of. Yeah. 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 He, I, kinda, I used to just make yeah. an example because everybody knows. Him yeah. 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 Memphis, yeah. And, yeah. Absolutely. Um, I just, I mean, it, it's just <laughs> crazy how people just jump into something because they right. see somebody else doing something. And that's, that's a huge bad mentality that Memphis has right now. Right. Everybody right. started selling hair. Mm-hmm. Everybody's delivering food now. Right. They're, they're cooking it from their house. Right. It's like, oh, I can make the best chicken in Memphis, so I'm going to make it and I'm going to deliver it. <laughs> right. It's like, so now you have 100 people delivering food. It's like, do something else, man. Right. Absolutely. You know, dude. Because they're not understanding that for Curtis Givens, that's a passion of his. Or somebody yeah. who makes chicken, that's a passion of yeah. theirs, right? Because so, Curtis you know. has been doing it since he was 15 years old in right. high school. Absolutely. So, I mean, that... that oh, yeah, that's right. He has. Yeah. I remember I that, yeah. Like I was saying earlier, I believe all entrepreneurs have that one superpower. Right, mm-hmm. that one thing that they know they do well, and it propels them in their path to entrepreneurship, in their business, and also ultimately in their life. What's mm-hmm. yours, Mike? Uh, <laughs> finding that void. Finding that void. Yeah, I figured as much. Yeah, yeah. And you, and you've you've ex- uh, exemplified that throughout the mm-hmm. throughout this session. But go ahead, I'll let you elaborate on that. But go ahead. Oh, Mike. it's just like you know, <laughs> I found a void in the sports card market. Right. I found a void in the cell phone market. I found a void. Um, in what well, what's coming next year? I found a void in it. Uh, I'm doing food trucks. You look around town, you see food trucks. Where, where's one healthy food truck? Mm-hmm. You got you got co- what co- coconut co- Cosmo coconut whatever. Right. That, I think they have a food truck, but they're in Midtown. Gotcha. You know, right there behind Paradiso. You, there's nothing in Germantown. You have you know you have a Smoothie King, but they gotcha. add sugar to just about every, every damn thing, so it's not really <laughs> vegan. So. <laughs> Food trucks. There's nothing in Bartlett where, where people really eat healthy. Mm-hmm. I think you got 901 Smoothie in Midtown. They're gotcha. amazing. Absolutely okay. great. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, you can go into Whole Foods, which they're in Germantown now. Gotcha. Um, but who wants to go into a store during lunch break, you know? Right. So I have one in Germantown, one in North Mississippi, uh, one in Bartlett, where, you know, people are more prone to eat healthy. Right. Of and course. Makes sense. So, yeah. So, I mean, you you look around and say, hey, you know, this is working great over here. Now, can I bring it over here? Gotcha. You know, this is working great in Atlanta. Can we do it in Memphis? Okay. You know, can can I do it before anybody else jumps on it? Absolutely. So uh, there's a million food trucks in Memphis, but nobody has a healthy food truck. Gotcha. Mm, Fair enough. All right, man. So last two questions before we wrap up today. Do you have any business or current venture or promotion or thinking about, you know, you're uh, about to set on? I know you talked about the... uh, the new business early. Mm-hmm. Talk about talk a little bit. Talk a little bit about that. I'm sorry, I'm getting tongue tied. Talk a little bit about that, or anything else you got going on that you want people to know about. Well, the scooter also, business. Also, I'm sorry. Also, course. social media or anything mm-hmm. else that you know you want to put out there. So. The uh, the scooter business. Mm-hmm. Um, I started with investors. In fact, this week. Okay. And I, I overwhelming you know amount of people come to me and say I want to do this. Gotcha. What's the name of the scooter business? Is I, I, I'm, I'm gonna start to brand my name. Okay. All right. And call it Cupid's. Ah, scooter okay. Rental. So I, I I was told that you need to start branding yourself mm. and not just your business. Got you. And I was like, well, Cupid's lady's like, well, once you go down there and then people get to know you on the beach mm-hmm. and they see your face, they're going to be like, Cupid's. Got gotcha. you. Got to go to Cupid's. It's catchy. Fair enough. Every, everybody knows me as Cupid. Right. You know, I mean, it's been my nickname for 20 years. Got gotcha. So now if I go down there and everything works great. They're like, Cupid's, Cupid's, Cupid's. Mm-hmm. You know, so that's what I want. Gotcha. You know, because when you you go down to South Beach, like, where's the scooter rental? Yeah, there's one right here, and there's one right here, and there's like five mm-hmm. up and down the strip. But nobody knows their name because there's so many of them. But if you get, you, you become localized, and people begin to know you, and you start shaking people's hands, they're going to start thinking of your name. Mm-hmm. So you're branding yourself Absolutely. at the same time. Okay. So now, once I brand my name, I can branch off into other businesses and people will trust my name already because this this business is amazing. So now when when I bring the delivery business to Miami, mm-hmm. because I mean I'll have two hundred scooters, I'm not gonna be able to rent two hundred scooters every day. I hope I do. Gotcha. But I can still at least have ten of them over to the side, and I can have people delivering for me at the same time. Cupids. Gotcha. Sweet. All right. Who are your uh, mentors? My mentors. Um. <laughs> uh, Charlie Chaplin. Okay. Martin Luther King Jr. Nice. Uh, people who who stood up for something. Mm, you know, it's absolutely. not. I know they're not really business people, 
Mm-hmm. But I think Charlie Chaplin and Martin Luther King Jr., the way they stood up for for everyone, not just, you know, black people or white people. Absolutely. Charlie Chaplin was a white guy and he stood up for everybody. He stood up against the war. And he was actually banned from America after he he, he created, you know, I don't know if you've ever seen The Great Dictator. Uh, I but, actually <laughs> I actually seen a clip of The Great Dictator. I actually last year used a clip and post it on social media because like, mm-hmm. it's like like the one speech at, I believe is at the end of it's the movie it's called the greatest speech ever told yeah it's like it, that that speech not only was it moving it, it's relevant today exactly right? it's the same as that thing <laughs> exactly <man. It's> like, <laughs> but even when, if you go back and listen somebody told me to listen to an old Ronald Reagan uh, clip from like the 50s and say, I said like damn like they didn't like the Middle East back then neither they say the same as that <laughs> thing <laughs> It's like, dude, I mean, it's just... It's one so. of those things. If you don't learn from history, you're doomed to repeat yeah, it, right? so I mean, I just think I love the way Martin Luther King Jr. stood up for everybody. Mm-hmm. You know, he never told white people, say, no, you can't march with us. He welcomed right. the white people Absolutely. To, to march with them. And I uh, know all races and women also. So he, it wasn't just guys. You know, everybody gotcha. marched with Martin Luther King Jr. So I think there's somebody that I definitely look up to, those two. Okay. Well, I got a follow up question. Uh-huh. So, uh, with that being said, uh, you talked about how you know Charlie Chaplin, you know, went above and beyond his craft, and mm-hmm. how Martin Luther King, uh, you know, was not just for African Americans, but for the equality of all people. Yeah. Right. Um, do you think uh, being an entrepreneur gives you that platform to kind of move into or to promote so certain social issues that are important to you? I think the and, and number so, one, you know, and if so, you know, why that is the number one social issue that I see. I mean, of course, you know, I, I support, I support, um, you know, Black Lives Matter. Mm-hmm. I support um, anything. I, I support Blue Lives Matters. Gotcha. You know, Fair because enough. I mean, I don't, I don't want innocent cops being killed. I don't want innocent young black men being killed. So right. I, mean, I support them. But my number one cause is when I grew up, I watched my dad beat the hell out of my mom, mm. and I lived two blocks away from. Uh, uh, women's and children's uh, battered home. Gotcha. So with my mom, she worked next door to this building. So I would play with the kids all day during the summertime while my mom was at work. But now, you know, I was like, well, what can I do now to give back? Because mm-hmm. I'm blessed with extra time. Um, so I decided, you know, the Helen Franks Foundation for Battered Women and Children. Okay. So okay. I want to um, uh, find some homes, uh, rent them out. Because, I mean, you here, here in Memphis, man, you can get a, you know, an older style, you know, four bedroom home, five, six hundred dollars. Not in the greatest neighborhoods. Right. But course. if I got four of bedrooms course. and then I do nonprofit, then, you know, I, I, I can give families and their their children some homes and a safe haven while, um, you know, they go through the court system or if they need to get away for the night, if they're being abused. Absolutely. It, it'll give them some place to go. Absolutely. And, you know, it's safe for them. Absolutely. So. So. That's going to wrap up this session of the Startup Life. Thank you, Mike. Thank you so much for Appreciate being it. on the show, thank man. Thank you for having me. Uh, will you, you be willing to come back later? Always. Okay. Man, cool, always. Man. All right. So hopefully, I have better stories for you, more success stories. Oh next no, time. it's fine, man. It's one of those things where, like I said, we try to uh, inspire our listeners to be entrepreneurs, and so mm-hmm. any information you can provide is very much. Appreciate it, man. So once again, thanks, Mike, for being on the show, man. Thank you, I appreciate thank you. it, man. Appreciate you having me. So here's my final take. Michael is one of those entrepreneurs that he's textbook in the sense of that he finds a void, he fills that void, and he makes money from it. So uh, I wouldn't be surprised if you know I'm being invited on his jet to go to close a business deal in Switzerland or somewhere one day. And I tell you this much, I look forward to that. If you want to let us know what you think about the show or like to advertise on our show. Let us know in the comment section. Subscribe to our show as The Startup Life can now be heard on iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher Radio, and SoundCloud. And also follow us on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram at Owls LLC. For a behind-the-scenes look into what we do at Owls, follow us on Snapchat at Owls LLC. There you will see our creative process and exclusive content. And hey, if you have an idea, be about that life, The Startup Life.